Hello and welcome to Red Fox Classics where we are working on a 1969 Mark II GT6. This car has been off for about 40 years and starting to piece it back together. Now, last time I spent a lot of effort working on getting the bonnet corner sorted. So this here. And this whole thing had been taken apart. Previously it was all wonky, but it is now back together. Next thing to do, put it on the car. But to do that, we need to fit that cross piece that goes over between the wheel arches and this bit of the bonnet here. And to do that, we need another one of these brackets. So, first job is going to be trying to make something like that. So let's go on with it. Right, so let's first of all see what sort of thickness we've got. Ah, one mil, easy. And it's an inch and a half wide plus that's just over an eighth of an inch edge. So we need now we're just over an inch and three quarters. And length three and a half. Inch and three quarters by three and a half. Okay, and hopefully I can just form it around this shape because this is the curve we want. So that's the, the centre line. So where's my original gone? Yeah, that's uh, it's going to work. Yeah, that's looking workable. So far, let's see if I can bend the lip on these edges. Obviously, this bit is going to be okay. And hold it in the right place at least. Curve looks alright. Look at that tube on. Alright, so the bonnet's on. And it's actually, it just went on in not too terrible a place. So I think what's holding it up more than anything is the bonnet cone and the adjust plate under there not being quite in the right place. Yeah, this needs to come back as well a little bit because it should be looking for five mil here and that's not a measuring device. So it's got a way to come back. Hopefully it should be able to do that because it does look that we're right at the front of these hinge adjustments. It should be able to. And the body should be in the right place. I mean, the body can't go very much anywhere else. You know, there's not a lot of wiggle room on any of these mounting points. And you know, we're right over that, the centre of the the H frame holes in the chassis. So I don't think the body can be too much in the wrong place. What have we got down here anyway? Though that's still. It's quite not. It's not. It's uneven. Five mil there, and right. this should be factory though. Anyway, I'm not going to make you watch me fiddle with the bonnet adjustment, but we'll come back and have a look when I've done so. Right, so I've been under and I've loosened up the plates that the bonnet can sit on, and I've managed to. Give this a shove back, so 
all across the middle, we're getting a five mil gap. That actually widens out towards the edge, but that seems to be because the curve of the bonnet and the curve of the skull are not quite the same, so ends up with this being a bit bigger. Actually, this is just slipped again. But that might be something I can do because the the the, 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 the gap at the bottom is quite big here as well. This sill is getting replaced, so possibly the door wants a little bit of an edge, and then it deals with that. Also, this isn't latched, so getting the latch in and getting that pulled down is going to change things again. But the the plates for the bonnet cones were as far forward as they could go, so I'm not really sure how that was on this side. You know, same deal, it gets a bit wider here. But this is now, it's a little too tight. So, so I suppose like the bonnet can swing a little bit, perhaps. Anyway, all that fiddling about would be for nothing if we couldn't get the hinges in. And it's looking like, so I've had to free off the adjustment here and hit them a bit, because this side doesn't really want to move. But we're looking like we're going to be able to get the hinge bolts in and have it where it is at the moment. So I'll just keep, keep going, iterating on being able to get it in the right place. It's all looking quite promising. You know, the whole whole thing is telling me that enough adjustment is available, which means that all of this section is, is good enough, which is a relief. Not impale myself on any of these yet. So I've had the brackets that attach to the chassis off and given them a, a quick blast to, well, I'm hoping to, that it would mean I could shuffle them a bit more easily when they're on the, on the chassis. But I found that this one, which is the one that was on the driver's side of the car, has a dent in there. So the top, so the top should be flat. The top should be flat, and it looks like actually this is twisted slightly, so I'm just going to so I'm clamp them together and then find a bolt, which well, I think I must have a bolt, I'll pass through both of them. Just to see if those are in line. Might even be able to do it with one of these because they're a bit long. Actually, there's enough wiggle in that. Maybe that's not important. Okay, maybe I'll finish that bit off and stick them back on. Okay, so after some more playing about, particularly with the bonnet cones, and I've got this latch out and adjusted both of the, the catches that are actually attached to the bulkhead down a bit. I've got my five mil thereabouts all the way across there. It's wide at both the rear edges. I guess this is just how this skull top and bonnet must be. I mean, my Spitfire is pretty terrible, but that's another story. This is mostly even. This is this is wide, but quite even. Obviously, this bit, the sill to door, is a bit weird there. The gap at the rear of the door isn't great either, so I'm kind of happy to stick with this for the moment because this wing's going to change. So for that reason, I'm also not too fussed. This is too tight. The sill's got to change. The wing's got to change. We built that right. That means all the hinges, you know, all this mess here that had to be built out of thin air is letting the bonnet fit fine. This one's a bit weird because that's that's five mil, and it gets tight, and then it gets fine all the way up. And I think it's actually the wing. This gap down here is huge, but this sill is a replacement. So again, I'm not. Uh, and that's way too tight as well. So that's that's something that's got played with. And that's fine. What I'm concerned about is I get the bonnet scuttle gap, and that means this is all 
good to go. And I got to now I can start working on, you know, <laughs> getting rid of some of this um, nonsense and and actually welding these bits in place. Now the bonnet tube doesn't fit the rearmost mount, so I think given this is fine, everything else is fine. It's going to be a case of giving giving the rear of the tube a, a tweak to bring it in line with the way the wheel arch needs it to be. But that's all great, you know. And this is really, this this was the hardest part, I think, because everything else, there's reference and stuff in place. So, you know, for instance, on on this side, I can, you know, I can fix this inner panel or I can replace the D-plate. I can leave everything else in place and it should let me just switch in that panels. I shouldn't have to have any worry about compromising, of the structure being compromised. But anyway, that's why I started with this bit, and that's a big hurdle to be passed. Obviously getting it all properly welded together is another thing, but looking very good. So, oh, what else did I, yeah, so with these, with these brackets, this one was pinched in at the back, so these two bits were too close together, that was making it difficult to adjust. And that's probably because it had been done up, you know, the, it had been done up at some point with the bonk tubes, the, the crush tubes in there, not in. So I bend it, bend the sides back out, flatten them out, the hammer on the side of the bench, and that's now happy. I've put, put shims, well, washer shims inside of hinges, because they don't, they don't sit right against the brackets. I'm not sure they're meant to be pinched in, I mean they are on my Spitfire, but you know, again, different problem. Anyway, so I've got two, two washers in this side on this one, and the one on... Again, one on the inner, uh, well, one on the inner side, the uh, right hand side of the car, on the other one. Abda, right. Right, so there's the bonnet back off the car. I put away a nice shiny bumper because I don't want to damage it. Have any, any sort of risk of damaging it. And I've just been eyeballing the wing against the deep plate again. I think it's right, but it's enough. I don't want to commit to the deep plate yet because everything I, you know, like if I sit straight edge against either side, you know, it lines up all underneath here. That edge seems seems fine, but I think it's probably wise to leave it. You know, if it needs a tiniest bit of a tweak to make it fit better with the wing, it's probably better to do that rather than any other option. So I think what that means I can do is I can get this thing in. I can get the wheel arch attached to it and get the weld in. I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to cut the old wing off and start fitting the new wing, but I also don't really want to do that without welding any of this lot in place. So I feel I've got enough enough that's you know hanging together with screws and glicos that I'd rather have something that was solidly attached you know before I cut away something else that's giving us original reference well ultimately it'll be annoying but not the end of the world if stuff has to get cut apart again it is metal it can get welded so I think what I should do is get the this bracing bit, whatever it's called, in, get it attached to the wheel arch, get that welded in, just cut away a chunk of the top of this wing here so I can weld the, the sort of strengthener piece in, you know, this this thing, if we can see it, yeah, so I get that welded to the top of the bonnet and then that gives me wheel arch and strengthening piece and that should should be nice and solid, especially with this bonnet tube attached. But on the subject of the bonnet tube, I think what I'm going to do is make a plate, make something that can weld to the top of the bonnet and reinforce that so I'm going to be able to bolt something here and give me another point where I'm confirming that this hinge bit goes back in the same place. So what I can then do is I can take the wheel arch off, I can clean off you know, all, my, all my little chunks of tack weld and get some primer on where it needs to go and then I can reassemble everything as it is. D-plate won't get welded 
got the wheel arch and the, the strengthener wheel. And this will go back on. It'll have its locating check there. And we can be confident that it's all still all right. And then when that's done, I can have the two back off again and I can do this little tweak to it so it will actually, you know, it will actually line up with these holes. You can see it's that black bit just to the side of my thumb there on the right hand side. So I'm just going to give the tube itself a bit of a bend. So yeah, I'll go dive in the scraps bin and see what I can come up with to go here. <laughs> I started towards cleaning up this area ready for welding and I've just had I've just had the blaster out and gone up in there because I couldn't think of any other way to do it despite the mess which I've now mostly cleared up so well yeah see it's everywhere bits of grip anyway gonna get the edge of this cleaned up cleaned up that little bit because I want to weld down there I want to get it primed and this primed wait for that to dry get everything sat in place and then take the wheel arch off and prepare the wheel arch to then i'm you know if i take one piece out the rigidity of everything else will stay put that piece back in and i can move other stuff and without risking distorting what i've put together here so i will do all that oh well you also see another welded this up you can see a, a kink in this Maybe I'll do something else later, but so yeah, I'll get it's got a bit of primer on and well, up onto there and clamp back in. So now I'm going to pull the wheel arch out, get that cleaned up and primed where it needs it, and then we'll be ready to start welding and stuff. Well, that's the wheel arch out, I'm mostly cleaned up. I've done a bucket last of some of the edges, particularly you know, that seam wants to be nice and clean right now. And the bits that again are going to be awkward to get to later. Locked up a bit of this wing. I'm going to get these holes filled in, or some of them at least, ground back, and then be able to get the wing in and weld through because these have been drilled all the way through. So I'll weld up these and weld through the, the holes in the inner support piece, and then eventually the new wing will go on top. Well, for me, this has been a long time coming. I managed to get some welds in there, a bit awkward. Also, inside up there. Got some in here as well, with a lot of holes to fill in. So, oh yeah, and, and this bit. So, there's some structure again, it's properly there, which is, is quite exciting. Now what I'm going to do next is deal with this little bit here. Because, obviously I did this repair, but with all the manipulation and getting everything to be happy, it's ended up not quite lining up with everything. So, and I'm gonna brace this again. I'm gonna cut through that tack, sort out all the, yeah, the tiny little bits that are gonna go in here. All tiny little changes required, and make one of those to go in. Now sits on this reinforcement panel here, and that, gets welded to this outer skin so I'd have to do it before I did the deep plate anyway which but what I want to do after that is start looking at getting the wing fitted because the deep plate could conceivably need to move a little bit up and down well in and out as we look into it looking at it to get the wing to work anyway let's get some bracing in and get on with it all right so where have we got to possibly backwards from 
when you last saw this because I started welding this in. Well, I got, I got this welded in and then I realised it actually was twisted a bit. So, cut that out and I decided to take out the deflate, get some of the welds in here cleaned up and just kind of have a general remove of all the extra nonsense I've added to this bonnet. And what I'm going to do now is make that a little bit from over here. Then that, that at least puts this sort of section into the done category. And then what I want to do is put the whole thing back on the car. The D plate sat back in place, so I'll click up back in place, and then start looking at the new outer wing. And that's going to let me build, you know, know is the D plate in the right place because I've got to fit, you know, the bit that's missing here to the D plate. And then I'll be able to sort of build up this section. Anyway, let's get this little bit built. Yeah, so I've got to make one of these, but I, I, and it's supposed to be 5 mil, sorry, 1.5 mil steel, thereabouts, and I've only got real scraps, so I'm just going to weld myself a couple of little bits to, together, and uh, that'll be enough to cut that out of. So you can see I've made that little bit to go in there. I'm just drawing a line on the back where I'm going to drill to be able to plug weld it onto this bit. And similarly I'm going to go through this, but I'm going to leave my locating hole and uh, just weld this bit up here and then keep this. Yeah, I think I will for the moment. And I'm going to need to, in I'm going to, need to increase that bend a little bit, aren't I? Otherwise we're poking out like that. Anyway, get that bent a little bit more, get those holes drilled. Get primed. So I got a bit of primer on that bracket, and while while I was waiting for that to dry, I just thought I'd have another look at this sill. Because if you remember when we fitted the bonnet, which I think was just this, I don't know when that was for you, but for me it was a while back. It was very close to this sill, and I was under the impression I thought this sill was original. But then I had a look again. And, you know, this looks very much, or looked very much like it was a cover. It looks like there's too much metal there. So I had to grind away with the took you know took the wire brush to it and these are plug welds so uh, pretty crappy plug welds so this is not original sill so I had a quick go here oh and look there's some filler but the reason I thought it was original is because this joint is really nice and I'm wondering if this has been it's actually along here that the joint is. Yeah, and the, uh, this doesn't look like it's. This has got still got plug welds in, so it doesn't look like this has ever come out, which would mean that either there's something over or around or under here, because the sill the sill actually goes underneath this panel. So to do the sill properly, you usually have to take this off. Rear wing looks original though, which I thought this one was. What the other one definitely isn't, because that's stitch welded. So um, yeah. Well, that's gonna have to come off. I got some kicking around. <laughs> got some, I bought some spare sales a while back so yeah and it's good I was gonna you know when I was thinking this was an original sale I really wanted to try and save it if I could because you know you don't get a email they're on the original ones as they say but there's all this horribleness in the footwell and I've tried to when I did the Spitfire I did welding inside these footwells when the floor was out it's awful so Probably a good thing this sill's going to have to come off. Anyway, let's stick to the bonnet. The reason I was looking at that is because I was wondering about, you know, when I do this wing, am I going to want to, you know, how am I going to want to fit it? But I think I'll fit the wing. And I will ignore the, the gap between the wing and the sill until we come to do the sill. And then I can decide on which needs to be modified or fitted in whatever place. Yeah, but let's deal with the bonnet corner first. So I got that little reinforcement piece in, done a bit of kind of manipulating and tidying up to fit this bit to whatever this face. 
there's still, uh, there's a, I want to do a little bit of a weld in there and in the corner there, which is going to be awkward to clean up, but to deal with that. This obviously all still needs cleaning up, but I can't get anything in there till this hinges out. I don't want to do that yet. So, next step really has got to be put the thing back on the chassis, get it lined up and start thinking about fitting up the wing. So I'm not entirely sure where we'll have got to in terms of episodes here, but I'm going to call wherever we've got to done because the next thing is to look at the wing and the wing deserves its own feature being, you know, quite a large important panel. So next time you see this, it should be on the chassis and we'll start looking at taking the wing off and getting the new one fitted up. So all that's left to say is thank you for watching, thanks for commenting, thanks for subscribing. If you've got this far and you are not yet subscribed, please do so, so you find out what happens next, and I will see you next time. Thank you.